All right, we've got some really cool stuff to talk about here. Joining us is Robert Reiner. He is the founder and director of Cybathlon. And this is really cool stuff. It's a championship for athletes uh, with disabilities and basically using all sorts of assistive technologies to kind of show off, showcase what you can do to kind of push those to their limits. Wow. It's premiering next Wednesday, uh, sorry, next Saturday, October 8th at, in Swiss Arena in Kloten. How's it going, Robert? Yeah, it's good, thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. This is really cool stuff. I love kind of taking, I mean, we just got through with the Summer Olympics, so everybody's kind of used to, you know, these kind of sports. This big, whole, big sporting events, big competition. Bo exactly, bombast, yeah. competition. But this is like taking it to another level. What is, um, before we kind of get into the event itself, what's your background in this field? How, and how did you come up with the idea for it? Yeah. I'm a professor of rehabilitation robotics, so we develop a lot of robotic devices for people with disabilities, for patients after stroke or spinal cord injury. And by meeting all these patients, I got this idea of the Cybathlon. So tell us a little bit about the Cybathlon. Um, I mean, wh where does it begin? How does someone get involved with this? Yes, so we have invited many famous teams working in the area of assistive devices, robotic technologies made for people with disabilities like powered prosthesis, powered wheelchairs, and we invited uh, people from research labs as well as from companies. And now they will come uh, on Saturday next week and participating at this uh, event. And what we want to show with this is not only the best technology existing, we also want to show the problems still existing by applying these technologies. It's still a big challenge for people using an exoskeletal device to stand up and sit down from a sofa or to or go upstairs with their wheelchairs or to prepare breakfast with their arm processes. We want to show the deficiencies and in this way promote the development of better technologies in the future. Wow. Is there any, uh, any precedent for this particular kind of approach, this particular style of, of competition to this level? It's a world premiere in this way. So there's no other event where so many di different disciplines are presented by international competitors uh, in a stadium with uh, several thousands of people watching it. And live television is also there. So it's a very big event and nothing like this happened before. What exactly are the games that these uh, cybathletes <laughs> will uh, will be will be participating in? So we have six different games or disciplines, categories as we call them, and they include races with arm prosthesis, races or race with leg prosthesis, um, and they can be powered, they can be novel, they can be as the developers want to make it be, as long as they are safe. There's another race with a wheelchair, with wheelchairs. Then there are races with powered exoskeletons, which are worn outside the body and support people with complete paraplegia, wow. for example. Mm. And then we have a special thing. We have a brain-computer interface race. So people who are very paralyzed are just sitting, watching a game, and they can control the avatar in the game just with their thoughts. Mm. Man, the brain computer interface. I saw that in the uh, the preview that we were just watching. I was like, this is I mean, that takes it to a completely new level, right? Seriously. You've got this you've got this competition of purely physical, but then we're starting at this point with the help of technology. This is what we're looking at right here. With the help of technology, we're starting to realize just the power of our brains. When we figure out how to connect technology to our brains in the right way, mm -hmm. what can you do? Uh, explain that event a little bit, because I'm really, really um, interested yeah. in this. So uh, when you start to move your leg or your hand, the brain is active right before you're doing this movement. And it's possible to record this activity because this activity is based on electrical activity. So you can wear that one of these helmets, as you see, these caps, wow. they're standard caps, you can buy them. They are used in diagnostics, in neurology, for example. And it's possible to detect these different activities and assign them to different thoughts after some kind of calibration or training. And so you can think about a special thing, let's say go left, go right, go up, down, go faster, slower, and in this way you can control your avatar in the game. Now, since we do not wanna do programming for games, we wanna support people with disabilities. So the, the idea in the long run is to use these interfaces to control a wheelchair, for example, in the future, right. or to control a prosthetic device, control any kind of kitchen devices for home use in order to improve the quality of life of people with strong and severe uh, disabilities. 
Wow, that is fascinating. So um, obviously, I, I suppose the parallel here would be the Paralympics. How does this kind of compare or differentiate from the Paralympics? There's a little bit of similarities, but also big differences. It's similar with respect to that it's, uh, it's a competition where people are um, want to be the, the first or the best. And it's in a stadium, people are watching it. And it's with people with disabilities. But that's actually all. The main difference is that we have here activities of daily life. It's not the goal to find the fastest and the strongest and those who can jump longest. It's uh, to find those people who are most skilled to use technology and in this way are able to compete with daily life challenges. And by allowing technology, and we don't have a problem with technodoping because we need technology to support these people, but by allowing the technology, we can also include patients with uh, more severe uh, um, disabilities who could, not be who could not take part at the Paralympics because there's no category for them. Wow. Yeah, this, uh, this is addresses a question that I had, which is, uh, at the Olympics, you know, there's all this thing about doping and mm -hmm. keeping a level playing field. And I, my uh, initial question was, how do you keep a level playing field? Man, the person with the strongest exoskeleton is going to win. Right. But it's not exactly a competition in that sense, what you just said. You're yeah, right. Um, they can bring the strongest technology as long as it's safe, of course. And yeah. we have built in some hurdles that is not getting too dangerous, of course. But they can bring anything which is novel and powerful. They have to be trained with the athletes or the, the, the pilots, as we call them. Mm -hmm. Pilots, and, that's um, good. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And since it's not so much on, on body performance and power, we, do not, uh, we are not afraid that the, the pilots are doping with uh, pharmacy. And, um, and on the other hand, of course, technology can also be used to, to dope, but that's what we want. Yeah, it really seems to be kind of a showcase not only of the uh, the skill, the ambition, the drive of the people who are kind of you know behind the technology, but also a display of what technology can actually do nowadays. That you could, I mean, you couldn't do any of this stuff, let's say, 20 years ago. At least not to this capacity. Technology has allowed for people who couldn't couldn't walk to walk, you know, in, in, way, in, in very new ways, um, yeah. cutting edge ways. So this seems like a demonstration not only of the people and their skill, but also of just how far technology has come to help them. Yes. And it's even more. It's, um, you know, for the life of the people with disability, technology is just one thing in their life. Right. It's also about inclusion. They're often discriminated and not included into the society, in the society. And they're bringing the people together at the stadium in the races, the pilots are developing together with the engineers. Children in the audience, auditory can come and try out the wheelchairs and the exoskeletons. We made an exhibition for this. And this way we bring together the people and try to get rid of barriers in the society between people with and without disabilities. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. what, is, uh, what has the response been uh, to the event? I have to, be, I have to imagine it's been super positive. Yeah, it was amazing. And when I had the idea four years ago, I had to convince people first. Then um, I made a trailer just with my son, who was 16 at that time. And it was so impressive, the reaction. So CNN came, wanted to have an interview. BBC came. Many other newspapers all over the world came. Nice. And the biggest companies in Japan want to organize the Cybertron 2020 together with the Tokyo Olympics. It's amazing how the media, but also the society is fascinated and want to be part of it. Yeah, want to help lift it up and shine a light on it for sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where do you see the Cybathlon events, let's say a few years out, two, five years down the line? Where do you see this growing to? So we are already planning next events. There will be big events every four years, uh, probably in, in Switzerland again, uh, but it can move also all over, the, all over the world. In these big events, we will add some more days and more disciplines, larger audience, and um, want to include also people with sensory deficits. We think about Cybertron arts, where people can play a, a guitar using a prosthetic device mm. or play uh, other instruments or dance with robotic devices. There are many ideas, also including elderly who are weak. And we also want to go do um, uh, annual events, which can be a bit smaller, so national competitions, pre-competitions, or di competitions in just one or two single disciplines, which can be new road shows into schools to include also young pupils, students. So there are many ideas. Wow, that's really cool. Th this is uh, fascinating, and it obviously relates to those with disabilities and how technology can help them to lead more uh, integrated lives. 
But I wonder how this affects, or if you're even thinking about this idea called transhumanism, where technology can actually be applied to those without disabilities to enhance capabilities. Yeah, that's a very good question, which I'm faced uh, quite often. Of course, technology can be used in a very invasive way with the body or inside the body. And then you have to ask yourself if this is good or not. There are many examples which showing that it is good. People are using uh, heart pacemakers for the heart, uh, cochlear implants in the ear, mm -hmm. um, or prosthetic devices can also be partly integrated. And as long as there is a big advantage, a big benefit, which is much larger than the risk by, for example, the dependence you might generate or the surgical implantation, the trauma. So if the benefit is much bigger, I say, okay, it's great to use this kind of tele technology. And there are many examples that technology nowadays are already that invasive in that sense that they're making you dependent on it. Yeah? If I go out of my house in the morning and forgetting my smartphone, mm. I'm helpless. I feel really disabled. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've, I've, I'm there every day. I, I forget something. Uh, and if you forget your smartphone, man, it's, it's like you can forget a million things and be okay, but you forget your smartphone. You're it's, like you, it's like you've left behind part of your brain. That's right. Honest. That's right. Uh, although it's, it's, it's by no means a match to what's going on here. How can people uh, follow and watch the Cybathlon? Yes, of course, if you're living close to Switzerland or want to take a flight to Switzerland, you can join and uh, enter the stadium. The tickets are almost sold out now, but um, if you're fast, you can still get some. And you can also watch it on television in the German-speaking countries live, or you can do an internet, uh, watch it on internet via internet streaming. Excellent. Streamed. Yeah, you're streaming it, uh, live streaming it to the site, cybathlon.ethz.ch. Cybathlon.ethz.ch. And that's 1 a.m. Pacific, 4 Eastern for the qualifying rounds. And you've got 5 a.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern for the finals uh, here in the U.S. So uh, uh, folks are going to have to wake up a little early to watch this. <laughs> but, but well worth it, I'd well, say. I was going to say, but totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, Fascinating stuff, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk all about Cybathlon. Robert Reiner, of course, the founder and director of Cybathlon. Best of luck, and uh, I'd love to check in with you at some point and kind of uh, see how things are going. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robert. Take care.